Adams is toting that his 60-day shelter policy has worked for single adult migrants. And now he's doubling down on that same policy toward migrant families. Fox 5's Lizette Nunez joins us from outside the Roosevelt Hotel Intake Center that's in Midtown. And Lizette, this is still a bit controversial. Yeah, absolutely. Good morning, Dan and Deshaunay. Well, the mayor is defending this latest policy with no signs of things slowing down and not much help from the federal government. The mayor says they have to make more room within his shelter system. We are really, really struggling with families with children. That is a real struggle for this administration. Mayor Adams defending his administration's decision to cut down migrant family stays at emergency shelters. This week, the city announced they will be giving 60-day notices to families to find alternative housing. New York City was seeing about 2,400 new arrivals per week. That number has now soared to 4,000. Y'all see how clean and well-dressed they were getting off that bus? You see that? How their hair is all neat and organized. They got clean clothes on. The children are smiling and look all happy and they all neat and shit. Y'all see that? New migrants per week. We really want to make sure that we're making room at the front door. So giving people a time limit so that they can get connected to family members and other opportunities, we think is the tools that we have. Days ago, the city lost the St. John Villa Academy migrant shelter on Staten Island. The FDNY shut it down due to safety concerns like a non-working sprinkler system and missing fire alarms. With the crisis showing no signs of slowing down, the city says migrant families will be connected with the caseworker to find new housing and make more room. The process of figuring out where a family is going to move. In. First and foremost, how are you going to make more room? <clears throat> I've never known New York City to not be overcrowded. That's one of the reasons for I never understood how people lived in the city. Right now, I've been to New York. It's been a long time since I've been there, but I've been to New York City. I've been to damn near every borough. I've been to motherfucking Staten Island. I've been to Manhattan. Manhattan. I've been to Long Island. Hell, I've even been to upstate New York, like fucking Schenectady and, 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 and Syracuse and shit. Here's what I'm not understanding. You bring these people to this fucking country. You open up the floodgates. You get on top of the highest peak and the highest point you can find. And you yell to the top of your lungs, come on in. It's a goddamn free for all. Then they come here and now you say, oh, yeah, man, you only got 60 days, bro. Then you got to get the fuck out of here. Where are these people supposed to go? Alternative houses where? You mean to tell me you can find alternative houses or at least you're talking about alternative housing for these fucking people, but you've never gave alternative housing to all of the fucking God knows how many people that are homeless in, 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 in New York City. Like how I explained to you guys in another video that I've done in the past, I've been homeless. I've stayed in every motherfucking shelter in, 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 in Chicago. I remember when Oprah Winfrey had Pacific Garden Missions relocated off of State Street right there at Harrison over there to all um, over there off of um, they relocated them to over there off of um, 14th and Canal, which is roughly close to like maybe a mile away from there. And her 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 alleged reason for doing it was because of the school that was on the corner of Harrison and State Street. Right here it is. You got all of these fucking people. Like I told y'all, the reason why I know that seven out of 10 homeless people in Chicago is ex veterans is because I used to be homeless. That's how come I know. Remember, I told y'all I listen to veterans. I don't give a fuck who you are. You could be a homeless ass, toothless ass nigga that was in the, in the military, or you could be somebody like Jim Red Wolf or Rondo or Trauma Hawk or whoever. I don't give a fuck. If you an ex veteran, I'm willing to sit down and converse with you. And I've been that way since I was very young. Like I told you, I grew up in a house with a man that saw trigger time in Vietnam. He killed a lot of people, a lot of people in Vietnam. OK, and, 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 and I've always been interested, always, no matter what branch of the government you uh, branch of the military you were in. I've 
always been interested in what military, ex-military people have to say. I don't give a fuck about their skin color. I don't give a fuck about their hair texture. I don't give a fuck about the demographical background they came from or anything. I've always been willing to listen to ex-veterans. I've always been willing to sit down and have conversations with them. That's how come I can tell you personally that seven out of 10 homeless motherfuckers in Chicago are ex-veterans. Wow, man, look at this shit, man. Like, this should be a wake-up call to veterans. This right here should be a wake-up call to veterans, ex-veterans, and etc. So what I'm thinking, and this is just, you know, you guys can chime in and, and let me know what it is that you all think. What I am thinking that they're doing is they're going to use this new policy that they're going to make because they're going to implement more policy now behind this bullshit. And what they're going to do is, is they're going to start to target everybody in this country with that policy. Right. For example, the vagrant and vagabond shit that they used to do from back in the day. I could see them bringing that back, arresting your ass and throwing you into some sort of camp or whatever, because they consider you to be a vagrant. And basically all a vagrant is is somebody that's poor. You're going to start locking motherfucking people up because they're poor and they're going to start with these immigrants and they're going to turn that shit over onto everybody. That's one of the theories that I have. Right now, the other theory that I have is that they're going to allow these people, they're going to cut these people loose. They're going to allow these people to travel to and fro freely. And this shit is going to cause a lot of fucking chaos. Like, man, you just can't make this shit up. You just cannot make this shit up, man. Like, like the, the, the so-called black people in this country, man, I have no respect for y'all. I have no respect for y'all. And this is not self-hate. I have no respect for you African-Americans. I have no respect for you black men and women. I don't. I do not respect y'all because y'all play too damn much. You sitting back and allowing this shit. Here, listen to me, y'all. Let me explain something to you. Let me explain something to you. This is how you understand when I tell you this ain't self-hate. First off, I'm not black and I'm not a fucking African-American, right? That's first and foremost. Here it is. These motherfuckers are walking around here so blind and so naive to what's going on that they don't even know that they're the only ones that can stop this shit. The so-called black man. Here it is. You a black king and you don't even know what the fuck power you got. You supposed to be a black. If you so much of a black queen, how come you don't know that we the only ones that can put a stop to this shit? This is the original Lone Wolf, man. I'm out.